blended paint finish, furniture transfer, distressing, white wax, all of this and more coming right up in this furniture makeover tutorial. Hey, I'm Deanna. Welcome to my studio. Thanks so much for joining me for this dresser makeover tutorial. This is part one of a two part series. In this video, I'll teach you how to create a blended paint finish using products from the Real Melt Paint Company. And in part two, I'll be applying this floral transfer from Iron Orchid Design. I'll leave links in the description below to all of the products I'm working with today so you can easily find them if you'd like to recreate this project. I contacted the Real Milk Paint Company to see if they'd be interested in donating some products for me to use in this video, and they were. So big thanks to them for the products you see here. This is what I'll be using in this video. TSP for cleaning. Three colors of milk paint. Earth green, which is a dark green color, soft white, and Granny Smith green, which is a lighter green. As well as low sheen finishing cream for sealing and soft white wax to add into the grooves and creases to highlight those details. So let's get started. Before I paint a secondhand or old piece of furniture, I like to give it a good clean. The Real Milk Paint Company sent me some TSP. It's an all-purpose heavy-duty cleaner that removes any wax, grease, or dirt and prepares the surface for painting. Now this can irritate your skin, so I suggest you throw on a pair of gloves before you get started. I've got a gallon of hot water here and I'm going to mix in two tablespoons of the TSP. I like to use a sponge with the scouring pad. Dip it in the bucket of water and stir to help dissolve. Squeeze your sponge out and then just start to scrub down your surface. While I'm waiting for my furniture piece to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my paint. Milk paint comes in powdered form. It's non-toxic and environmentally friendly, and all you need to do is add water. In the plastic container, you'll find the powdered paint in a bag, as well as a marble, which you'll use for mixing up the paint. Mixing the paint is easy. It's just a one part paint to one part water ratio. So I'll be mixing a half a cup of powder to a half a cup of water. I've got a bucket of clean warm water here. and Now I'll go ahead and just add a half a cup of water to each of these three colors. Drop in the marble. Snap on the lids. And shake to mix the paint. You can hear the marble knocking around just like a spray paint can when you shake to stir it up. I'll leave these cans to sit here for just a little bit to allow the bubbles to settle and the paint to fully dissolve. In the meantime, I'm just gonna mask off a couple of areas on my dresser with painter's tape that I don't want to get any paint on. I decided to leave the hardware in place and I'm gonna paint right over it. I'm not sure how well this paint will stick to the hardware, but I'm gonna give it a try. So to help with adhesion, I'm gonna start by lightly sanding the hardware to scuff up the surface. I'm almost ready to start painting, but I want to share with you my plan for this piece. I'll be using earth green, the dark green color, mostly on the outsides and along the bottom, blending into Granny Smith green, which is the mid-tone green, and soft white here mostly in the middle where I'm going to be putting my floral transfer. In video two, I'll be applying that transfer. Now you can put the transfers over dark colors and they do stay quite vivid and opaque, but I've just chosen to go with a light background for those flowers on this piece. I'll also be bringing the three colors up over the top and onto the mirror. So let's get to painting. 
I'm going to scoop some of each color into its own tray. Because I'll be using multiple colors and blending them on the surface, I want to avoid contamination in the can. I'm ready to start painting. I've got my three colors each in their own tray with three separate brushes. I've also got a spray bottle here with some water. So if the paint starts to dry too quickly, I can spray it with a little water to help blend the colors on the surface. My first layer is really just about blocking in shapes and colors. So I'm not too worried about blending or the overall finished look just yet. And whenever I paint a vertical surface, I like to start at the top and work my way down. That way, if any paint drips or runs, it won't mess up the area that I've just painted. When painting in an area with carved or details, I like using these oval brushes and I just really smush the paint in there, watching for any pools or puddles in the crevices. My first layer of paint is completely dry and I'm ready to move on to the second coat. It actually dried really quick, about half an hour and it was dry to the touch. I let it sit a little bit longer and now we're ready to move on. But before we do, I just want to take a look at what we've got going on here. So I've got the three colors, the dark green along the bottom and then it comes up both sides. A little bit of the dark green on the top, blending into the mid-tone green on the top and then sort of framing the center with the white. The first layer is pretty flat, just basic shapes to block in the overall colors and where I wanted them. My second layer, I'm going to focus on building some visual interest with dry brushing and using water to blend the colors on the surface. So I'll pour some paint out of my trays and we'll move on to second coat. I've got my three colors of paint poured out here. Soft white, Granny Smith green, and Earth green as well as a chip brush. Chip brush is just an inexpensive natural bristle brush with jagged ends. It doesn't hold a lot of paint, but it's great for dry brushing and I'll show you how that works. You start by getting a little bit of paint on the tips of your bristles and then just dab it off on a paper towel or a cloth so there's hardly any paint on the tips. And then take the brush and with just a really loose sweeping motion, you're just gonna brush it along the surface. Hardly any pressure on the brush, and it's just going to catch those raised parts. And you can load your brush. Remember to offload as you go. Now I'm going to get some of the mid-tone green color on my brush. Without rinsing, I'll just go ahead and tap it into the tray, offload it a bit, and then start to work some of that green back up into the white here, just allowing the colors to blend right on the surface. And now I'll take some of the dark green color and just feather that in along the bottom of the mirror, blending into the mid-tone green color.
Now I'm gonna take my spray bottle with water and just add a little water onto the surface to help blend the colors so they're a little bit softer. Don't wanna oversaturate the surface, but just a little bit of moisture to reconstitute the paint to help it mix together. I'm gonna to get a little bit of the dark green color on my brush and just feather it over top here where I added that white in. And then I'll grab some of the mid-tone green, just layer some of that in a little bit here and there. Some more of the dark green. And I don't mind if it runs or drips a little bit as it's blending on the surface. I'll try to catch some of that as I go, but I think that'll just add a little bit of interest to the piece as well. I'm just gonna continue to play between the three colors with dry brushing, using a little water to mix the colors on the surface, and just see how it evolves as I go. It's not an exact science, it's just sort of playing with the colors on the surface. I'm pretty much done with the mirror for now. I might come back and add a little bit of a third layer on top once it dries, but I'm ready to move on. I'm going to take this dark green color here and bring it more down onto the top of the dresser and then blend it into the mid-tone green, spilling that over the front side. I'll do the exact same thing that I did on the mirror. I'll start with some dry brushing, just sweeping the color across the surface. Then I'll grab my spray bottle and add some water to help blend those colors, maybe adding a few drips and runs in the process. I've got a second layer done on the entire dresser and I wanna add just a little bit more. So not a complete third layer, but a few more little bits here and there just to further blend out some harsh lines that I'm seeing as well as highlight some of those details using all three colors again, dry brushing and using my spray bottle to mix on the surface. The paint on my dresser is now completely dry and before moving on to applying the lotion finishing cream, I'm just going to do a little bit of distressing. So using the sanding sponge, I'm going to sand on the edges and details just to give it a little bit more of a worn appearance.
After you've finished with distressing, just remove the excess paint dust, either using a soft rag or a nice big soft brush to sweep it off, or you can vacuum the surface, just being mindful that you don't scratch your paint finish with the vacuum. What I love about this type of paint finish is it is really forgiving, so if you do get a scratch while you're vacuuming, or say you sand off a little bit too much while you're distressing, you can easily touch it up by just adding a little bit more paint and blending it on the surface. Once you've got your paint finish how you like it, the finishing step is to put on the top coat. When you feel this paint here, it's very dry, very porous. It's quite natural, the product, so there's no top coats built in. So to finish this piece off, I'm going to apply a layer of top coat. I'm going to be applying the Low Sheen Finishing Cream, which is a water-based all-natural product as well. And it's going to give a little bit of a sheen when it's all dry, but what's more important is that it's going to be a protective, washable coating when it's all done. You can apply this with a rag, dipping it in, wiping it onto the surface. You can also brush it or with a low nap roller, apply that to the surface. Today I'm going to be using the same brush that I used to apply the paint. And I'm just going to pour some out in a container um, as there might be a little bit of that paint dust left on the surface. I don't want to get any green mixed in um, because I'll likely have some left over. So always pouring my product out before I get started so I don't contaminate the contents of the container. You can see the consistency of this is pretty thick. But I'm still going to start at the top and work my way down just in case anything drips or runs. It won't mess up the area I've already done. It's a nice thick pasty texture, a one coat application which makes this super quick, easy and simple. And I'm just going to get started. I'll dip my brush into the finishing cream and then just start to paint it on to work it into the surface. Watching for any areas that might build up and create a heavier puddle or pool. It's non-yellowing over the real milk paint, which is nice. It's not going to turn yellow over time, but I do want to still be mindful of leaving big heavy gloves in areas that could end up milky or foggy. And then if you're working into a detailed area, just take your brush and just really work it into all those creases and crevices. I finished applying the top coat, one quick easy layer. This was my first time using this product and so I was actually quite impressed with how easy it was to apply, very forgiving, and I liked the thicker texture of it. The other thing was that I didn't use hardly any, about, about this much here, so maybe a third of the container for the entire dresser, which is awesome. So I can easily get two more dressers out of this one container. The brushes clean up very easily with just some warm water and soap. Same with the paint. When I rinsed that, that came out no problem. So overall, really easy forgiving products to work with. I'm just gonna let this dry up a little bit, then I'll remove the painter's tape from the mirror and we'll take a look at the finished piece. The top coat has been on and drying for about half an hour and it's already dry to the touch, but it's still pretty fresh. So I'm gonna leave it sit for at least 24 hours before I set anything on the top and it'll take some time to cure and get to its hardest strength. I did mention earlier in the video, there'll be a part two to this dresser where I apply a floral transfer to the front, as well as add some white wax into the creases just to add another layer of dimension and interest. I'm curious to know though, what do you think about the dresser as it is? Could this be a finished piece on its own? And do you like this style of painting? Go ahead and leave your feedback in the comments below and let me know what colors you'd like to see this type of finish in for future projects.
Now, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are alerted when I upload part two. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you back here next time.